This video is about course logistics. It'll tell you a little bit about how the course is going to work. First of all, there are no formal prerequisites for the course, but all data analyses will be performed in the R programming language. You can find some videos on how to install R through the link that I've provided here. Having a basic knowledge of R will make the class much more accessible. If you want to assess your knowledge of R, you can take the self-graded R pre-quiz, which I've linked to here. This quiz does not count toward your final grade for data analysis, but it might help you understand whether you're ready to tackle the rigorous demands of a data analysis class. Give yourself one point for each correct answer. If it takes you more than less than an hour and you get a score of 10 or higher, you should have absolutely no trouble with the level of R in the class. If it takes you more than an hour or your score is less than 10, you might want to check out the course videos for computing for data analysis available on YouTube here. An important point is that I'll try to explain as much as possible the R programming uh, functions that we will use during this class, but having a background of R will make it much easier to keep up. Why are we using R? First of all, it's free. There are other statistical programming languages, but many of them cost quite a bit of money, and R, probably because it's free, is probably the most widely used language for data analysis. There are some competitors, like Python, but R is the most commonly used language for most analyses performed today. Another component of the reason why we're using R is that typing is better than point and click. It's very hard to communicate which analyses you performed when you perform them with a point and click software. But it's very easy to communicate if you have a set of commands that you've written out that the computer performs. Second of all, it's reproducible. If I hand you a script and the data sets that go with that script, you're able to reproduce all of my analyses. We'll talk about during the course of the class why reproducibility is an incredibly important topic in data analysis. It also requires more thought, which gives you more time to think about what are the analyses that you want to perform and how you want to perform them. It also is an extensible language, which has a huge number of useful packages, as you will see during the course of the class, that have been written by people other than the R core developers. And there's a huge user base of, of developers who are creating software for you right now. So now a little bit about the course structure. My goal is to make all videos 10 to 15 minutes. Several of the topics in the course may be broken down into subcomponents to make sure that they fit into that short video, slot, video length, but I'll try to indicate when a, a topic is a subcomponent of another topic. I'll include R code in the slides, and you should be able to copy and paste the R code from the slides uh, directly into the R console and follow along with the analyses that I'm performing. The slides will be available both in PDF and HTML form from the Coursera site. Grading for the class will be on the basis of quizzes and data analyses. There will be a total of eight weekly quizzes, each worth 10 points, and there will be two peer-reviewed data analysis reports worth 40 points each. So in total there are 160 points for the course. To earn the certificate for the course, you need to earn 100 of the 160 points. And to earn distinction, you need to earn 144 of the 160 points. A, a little bit about the quizzes. You may attempt each quiz up to four times. Only the last attempt will count. So if you attempt the quiz three times, the third attempt will be the score that you receive for that quiz. The data analysis you, will, you submit will be scored by your peers using a defined rubric we'll talk about in a minute. Your final score for the data analysis will be the median of the peer review scores. You have up to five late days during the course of the term, which you may use on the quizzes. You may not use these late days on the peer review assignments. Late days allow you to turn in an assignment late without any consequence to your grade. See the course logistics page for assignment due dates. A little bit about scoring for the data analysis assignments. You will get one week after the data analysis deadline for each data analysis to complete the peer review of the assignment. You will have multiple data analyses to grade for your peers. Each data analysis assignment has four parts. The main text, a figure and a caption, the references, and R code. Each part will be scored on multiple criteria. And when grading your peers, you will give zero to five points for each criteria. The rubric is explained in the peer assignments when they become available, including what each of the points 0 to 5 means for each criteria. 
The final score will be the percentage of available points multiplied by 40, which is the total number of points available for a data analysis. To give you an idea about how you'll be scoring the data analyses, I've listed the questions here. Remember that the categories of values for each question from 0 to 5 will be explained in the rubric when the peer analyses become available. Here's an example of some of the questions that you'll be asked. Does the analysis have an inter for the main text, you'll be asked, does the analysis have an introduction, a methods, analysis, and conclusions section? Are figures labeled and referred to by number in the text? Is the analysis written gram in grammatically correct English? Are the names of variables reported in plain language rather than encoded names? Does the analysis report the number of samples? Does the analysis report any missing data or other unusual features? Does the analysis include a discussion of potential confounders? Are the statistical models appropriately applied? Are estimates reported with appropriate units and measures of uncertainty? Are estimators slash predictions appropriately interpreted? Does the analysis make concrete conclusions? And does the analysis specify potential problems with the conclusions? If you don't understand what some of these mean, don't worry about it. We'll be talking about them during the course of the class, and they'll make more sense when it comes time to review the assignments of your peers. There are also questions about the figure, such as, is the figure caption descriptive enough to stand alone? Does the figure focus on a key issue in the processing modeling of the data? Are axes labeled and are the labels large enough to read? Does the anal and then on the references, does the analysis include references for the statistical models used? And then for the R script, can the analysis be reproduced with the code provided? An important part of this class is that it is an experiment. This is the first data analysis class that's ever been offered to this many people at the same time. And since I'm human, I'm prone to a typo or two. This is also my first time giving video lectures like this at scale. I'm totally happy to get feedback in the feedback form and I'll try to address as many if issues as I can. But keep in mind that currently data analysis is as much art as it is science and we're going to be covering a lot of material. I hope you'll learn a ton and I hope you'll enjoy the class a lot and I hope you'll also take the time to help me improve it for the next time we, I give the class. The last thing I'd like to talk about is how to get the slides. Slides for this course were made with an R package called Slideify, which is, can be uh, accessed from this site here. The slides are available from this website, github.com slash jtleak slash data analysis. You can recompile the slides from scratch by downloading the directory containing the lecture from GitHub, setting the working directory to the lecture directory, installing Slideify, and then running the following commands. If you then look at the file index.html that gets generated, it will show you the slides for that particular lecture. Alright, that's a little bit about the class. Now on to the material.